Hey everyone, I'm Sean. And I'm Jay. And we watch movies. Yes we do, and today we watched one called The Sleepover. That is a brand new Netflix movie, and it's a family-friendly sort of action-adventure movie. Um, so it does kind of struggle because it, it fits in a lot of genres, and I think most of all yeah. you have to remember that this is a movie for kids with kids. So everything is a little tamer action-wise, adventure-wise. The peril is usually sort of modified or toned down just by the tone of the movie. It's keeping it light, it's cracking jokes. So even though it's a little bit of a almost national treasure sort yeah. of um, find the clues the and clues. Yeah, yeah, do all of that. Um, it's. I thought it was a nice little movie, actually. I was pleasantly surprised <laughs> by this too. movie. It's, it's actually <laughs> very enjoyable. Yes. So just this genre and the fact that this is a Netflix original, obviously they do Oscar caliber stuff and they also do, um, you know. Garbage. Yeah. What's the, um, oh, the Razzies. They oh, do yeah. Razzie <laughs> caliber stuff. Yeah. And, and everything in between. So it's a gamble. This one is a great gamble though. I'm so yeah, glad we rolled is. the dice because I too was pleasantly surprised. You go in with kind of low expectations, but this one was kind of fun even for us. Yeah. And I think it's gonna be a real uh, crowd pleaser with kids. I think kids are gonna love this movie. Yeah. Yes. So a quick synopsis probably won't be that quick knowing me. Uh, mm -hmm. Kevin, Kevin is a, a little guy in sort of middle school. He's having a bad day. First, his teacher busts him for flubbing his oral presentation on his family history. Um, you know, because well, he made everything <laughs> up. No, he didn't. Uh, Andy Weir did. It's in a book called The Martian. It was made into a major motion picture. It wasn't Kevin who made that up. He plagiarized that shit and his teacher calls him on it. Um, so he's got the weekend to do better. Um, but then, you know, he dances it out in the public washroom, as you do. That's great stress relief. But the bully is in there taping him the whole time, which, first of all, that is a huge red flag, somebody mm -hmm. taping you in the so bathroom. Yeah. That really should have been made into a bigger deal. But this movie's pace is brisk, baby. We gotta move right along to the cafeteria where the bullies are still hounding poor Kevin and the lunch lady has to come over to mediate. And the super humiliating thing is that the lunch lady is also his mom. So Malin, Malin Ackerman, she pops up randomly these days. Yeah, she does. She, she disappeared for a long time. Yes. And now she's, now back she's back sometimes. Playing the mom. Yeah. Playing the mom in a Netflix movie. So she kind of tells the bullies off. Um, but that doesn't she really... She does. She says she's going to murder them and their families. Well, <laughs> in so many words. <laughs> It's unorthodox. <laughs> Probably um, not approved. Not on the list of approved lunch lady tactics. But not effective. She's a maverick. <laughs> so, anyways, it's a bad day. He gets home, um, and his nerdy little friend Lewis is coming over, and they're going to have a sleepover in the backyard. So, Kevin is played by the very charming Maxwell Sinkins. And a nerdy little Lewis, bedwetter Lewis, don't call him that to his face, but he's got special undies for, yeah, for the first problem, the <laughs> played by Lucas J. These are really cute kids. Uh, Kevin has an older sister, Clancy, played by Sadie Stanley. And she is a teenager, I think she's like 15 or 16. And she's not having a sleepover, she's having a sleep outer. She is attempting to sneak out of her house to go to a party her parents already said she could not go to. As parents do. Yes, parents ruin everything. Um, but luckily, and I think um, Clancy is normally a pretty good girl, a rule following yes. girl. But her friend Mim, <laughs> played by Cree Sacchino, uh, is maybe um, a little bit of a, a rebel influence. So she convinces her, we're gonna sneak out. I mean, there's a close call with dad, played by Ken Marino, but he's just an oblivious dad who doesn't see his little girl doing all the stuff that she's actually up to. So the four kids are out of the house, or so we think. 
uh, when somebody breaks into the house and kidnaps mom and dad. Now, in fact, Lewis was in the bathroom giving himself a pep talk because he has to, you know, camp out in the cool night air. It's going to be tough for a, bed, a known bedwetter. So he sees this stuff goes down and he goes out to the tent where he meets up with the sister and her friend, all four of these kids, and he tells them, I just saw ninjas steal your parents. Now, That's pretty yeah, accurate. <laughs> a little bit, yes. So, um, so the rest of the night, these four kids, really intrepid, brave little kids, <laughs> as it turns out, are going to try to save their parents. Um, from this weird kidnap situation and the mother has left them a series of clues so it's like the da Vinci code they're yeah. <laughs> only like a little less perilous a little less deadly the kids are gonna be okay so it's all right to watch this with your kids um, but yeah a series of clues where they have to you know go to this place and go to this place and figure stuff out and it's a great little puzzle for everyone um, but when you see all of these clues planted by the mother, you start to realize she's maybe not just a lunch lady. <laughs> like they think maybe something else is going on here. Um, so we do see the parents and the trouble that they're in, that those scenes are intercut with the kids just trying to get <laughs> to, the, to their parents, their poor silly parents who got kidnapped. And for some reason, they don't want to go to the police or even call a responsible adult. No. They're just going to figure gonna this out themselves. themselves. Yeah. They're independent. Mm -hmm. they, they are. So, um, yeah, like you said, it was kind of a pleasant surprise. I mean, obviously, it's not going to win any awards. No. And it's not reinventing the wheel. No. Director Trish C. really, she knows what she's doing. There's broad humor, you know. Every... Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, <laughs> yes, it's not it just kid humor either. No. Um, and Ken Marino also has this type that he plays, and he's very good at it, and he yeah. brings it here. He's just, I mean, his wife might be a secret badass, but this guy is he's legit not. wimp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a witty wimp, so yeah. he's going to keep over-narrating what's happening to them, especially when his insecurity really kicks in when he finds out his wife's former partner in crime, and maybe else, something else, played by hunky Joe Agnelli, is, uh, yeah, it's- um, Back in the picture. He's back in the picture, and it's immediately tensed. It's a weird little triangle. <laughs> this is from a script uh, by Sarah Rothschild, and I thought it was really actually a pretty good script, yeah. because, I mean, this m movie would have been in danger of being super cheesy super awkward super stilted of course casting the right kids is always issue yeah. number one because kids who can't get this done far outnumber those who can and yet i thought i don't know if it directors really stumble there yeah um but these four kids can all hold their own and so they are not a problem whatsoever and in fact, I really felt this kid playing Kevin, Maxwell Simpkins, oh, was great. so charming. Yeah. His little, you know, embarrassing little dance in the bathroom, I thought was too good to really credibly be believed be that this is a bully. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, we live in an age of TikTok. That shit would go would viral. Go crazy. Yes. <laughs> he's just, uh, he's a little too <laughs> smooth at it, actually. He sells it, you know? He's having a good time. So I thought the four kids had a nice little dynamic. And um, it's kind of, it, it reminded me of that terrible movie, My Spy. Oh, yeah. Where a little girl teams up with Dave Bautista, um, who is supposedly a spy, only he's quite terrible at his job. And the yeah, little girl goes. eats him for breakfast, basically. Yeah, I mean, she, that's the whole how she gets him in the first place. Is she <laughs> yes. figures out what he's doing. What he's doing. Within like 10 minutes of meeting him. <laughs> yes. So I kind of was apprehensive about this movie, yeah. maybe because of that, still the bad aftertaste that. of that one. Yeah. Um, but in this case, like the kids are just dropped into tropes that are really familiar to us. Like Kevin refers to his mom's bat cave <laughs> because everybody, every former whatever has a little storage space with secret weapons and Gadgets. toys and yes. So when they stumble on that, it's kind of fun for us to almost rediscover some of the tropes of the genre through their innocent eyes. 
<laughs> and yet also as an adult you want to be like put that down <laughs> your mother didn't really want you playing in here i know it <laughs> although like they did need her dna to get into that room so literally it was only her kids who ever could yeah. so a little suspicious well i don't think it was planned that way i think it was just for her only but yeah here well, we are. there was a series of clues. Jack. There were a series of clues. And she didn't clues. need the clues. That's true. So, okay. you know. Point taken. <laughs> but she wasn't wrong because the kids did get it done. They did. Yeah. So the point of the movie is just to enjoy their adventure, their wild night out, the best night of their lives that they even forget to document for Facebook. <laughs> yeah. um, That's how good it is. <laughs> yes. And that is how you get away with it. Uh, putting stuff on the internet is what gets you into trouble and what gets you caught. Stay off the social media and you have a much better chance of going under the radar. Yes, that's a really good lesson that <laughs> a lot of people haven't learned in yes. movies and otherwise. <laughs> that's right. So um, that's, that's the second uh, kind of cool family-friendly movie we saw. We also just did one for uh, Disney Plus, the one and only Ivan. Those are two really good family-friendly movies. Yes, sir. And it's been hard. I think it's been hard to find a good family movies lately. Yeah, I mean, there's been some, but we, yeah. as you will know if you've watched this, <laughs> and we, they're really, really forgettable. Yeah. And these are, are definitely a cut above what we've been served up yeah. over the course of the summer. Mm -hmm. So I'm really pleased to see that, especially since we've been having some like rainy, cooler weather. Yeah. Uh, apparently we're going to have thunderstorms and 40 degree weather tomorrow so oh, we may lovely. need families may need some some indoor some family movie night yeah. time yeah and so, these are two good choices mm -hmm. either way you will be happy i think yeah so that's a rare thing and it's kind of exciting to be able to talk and be happy about a movie for once yeah yeah exactly <laughs> okay so that's it for us thanks so much for watching everyone bye